Okay, so here we're going to do problem 127 in uh, Hilbert. Uh, this one is, again, find a problem of finding internal reaction forces. Uh, this one's a little different because it's, uh, it's a three-dimensional type of problem. Um, so here's the basic problem. You have uh, this bent shaft here, which is fully fixed at point A. There's this sort of wrench device which is being torqued with a downward force at D and then an upward force at C. All right. You're supposed to find the internal reaction forces, the moments and the forces at point B. All right. So, uh, again, to do this, you can choose whatever free body diagram you wish. You could do it on the whole structure and get the reaction forces at A and then work on this section, but uh, Let's look at the section cut from B down to the handle side, and then we don't have to worry about the reactions at A. Uh, now, um, the other thing I'm going to do on this problem, which is different than when we do the two-dimensional problems, is I'm actually going to do this in vector form. So I'm going to do this in terms of uh, three-dimensional vectors, moment vector and force vector. All right. So uh, on this face cut by B, Right? There's a distribution of tractions of the stresses. Uh, the average of those gives you a reaction force vector. And then the first moment of those, the tractions weighted by the moment arms over the face, gives you another vector of the internal moments. I'm going to put B here to denote the forces and the moments at point B. All right, so I am not trying to resolve out the individual components. I'm going to do this in vector notation like we talked about in the beginning of class, uh, the beginning of the semester, and deal with this uh, in th with three-dimensional vectors. So uh, this uh, is an equilibrium problem. Uh, we can invoke six scalar equations, the three sum of forces and the three sum of moments, and that would satisfy the six scalar unknowns. Or what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, which is the same, obviously, but I'm going to write two vector equations, one for sum of forces, one for sum of moments, and I'm going to directly get the force vector and the moment vector out of that. And you can get the components by knowing the x, y, and z um, values. Okay, so let's do it. Uh, sum of forces is easy. Well, it's easier. So let's do sum of forces. So again, this is going to be a vector sum of forces. It's going to go to the zero vector. So if we do the sum of forces, we have the force here at C, the force at D, and then the internal reaction force at B. So the sum of forces is the force at C, 60 kilonewtons. That's acting in the positive K direction. So you got to remember to put the unit vector, otherwise we have a scalar equal to a vector, and that's not appropriate. On uh, D, we have a force acting downward in the k direction of 60 kilonewtons, or, or, or a minus 60 kilonewton k force, and then that's balanced by the internal reaction force at B, and all that sums to zero. All right? So when you look at this, you can immediately, see, well, let me do it out one extra step, but you probably can immediately see that force B is equal to zero. Because if we juggle this, we get uh, force B is minus 60 kilonewtons in the K direction plus 60 kilonewtons in the K direction that cancel out, and then FB equals the zero vector. Okay, So there is no net force at B. All right. Now let's do some moments. Okay. Uh, so this might be a little different. You might be not used to seeing this. But if we're going to do sum of moments, again, I'm going to write the 3D sum of moment equation. Let's do sum of moments around, um, well, uh, since we know force, the internal force vector at B is zero, we don't have to, you know, it doesn't do us much good to take sum of moments around point B because of the fact that uh, it's... Um, we're not negating out 
the force really because it's zero anyway. So let's do sum of forces around point C just for the heck of it. So we're going to do sum of moments around point C equal to zero. All right. And this one goes to zero, so we don't have to worry about dealing with this moment. All right. So the sum of moments around point C equal to zero. So that gives me. Uh, this doesn't invoke any moment, so we have the moment from this force and then the internal reaction moment at point B. So, um, to get the moment of this force at point D about point C, we need this moment arm vector, I'm going to call it RCD, Okay, that's the moment arm from point C to D. Okay, so the moment of that force is going to be R C D cross that force. So that force is minus 60 kilonewtons in the K direction. Okay, so that's the moment of this force, about point C. And then we also have that unknown internal reaction moment at point B. And those two should sum together to give us zero. All right. So the only, you know, this approach is nice. It's not much more difficult when you have more complicated loading situations with this, uh, vectors going in other directions. Um, the only thing you have to get used to is, you know, being able to express the moment arm as a vector and then to perform the cross product. And they're relatively easy. I'll post a video kind of doing some review of cross product stuff since we'll do it more and more often. All right, so RCD. What's RCD? Well, RCD is a straight line vector in the minus i direction, and the magnitude of it is 300. So it's minus 300 millimeters in the i direction. Okay, so that is RCD. I'm sorry, RCD. So remember, you have to make sure you be careful. It's from point C to point D. It's from the point where you're taking the moments about to the point where the, mo the force is being applied. Alright, so now we get uh, sum of moments around point C is uh, the minus and the minus becomes a positive, so we'll do 300 millimeters in the I direction across 60 kilonewtons in the k direction plus mb equals zero. Now I get another piece of paper. We're almost done. Let's put that up there. All right. So now we get that mb is just minus 300 millimeters in the i direction cross 60 kilonewtons in the k direction. All right, when we do the cross product, well, let's deal with the units first. You got millimeters and kilonewtons, so a kilonewton millimeter is a newton meter. All right. Uh, when we do the cross product, uh, the scalars multiply, and then you do uh, the cross on just the unit vectors. So I cross K is a minus J, and that now gives us. Uh, a minus and a minus, that becomes a positive. So we get 18,000 uh, newton meters in the j direction. Okay? So that is the internal moment. All right. So that's the answer. So that means that the moment only has a component around the j-axis. So let's write that out. Maybe I can draw it a little better up here so you can kind of visualize it. Maybe I'll use uh, where that pen go. Okay. Use a pen to show it. Um, so the force is zero. This moment vector is actually in the j-direction. So that means if you want to think of it in terms of a moment 
uh, in a plane, you know, it's resisting the moment around this J-axis. That's a curl. It's a little tough for me always to draw. That sits in the Ki plane or the Xz plane. And that makes sense because here we're torquing down this way. So the internal reaction on that has to be a positive in that direction. Okay? All right. So again, uh, when you're dealing with a three-dimensional problem, it's, it's an option to deal with it in terms of the scalar components. But uh, actually, I find it easier from a bookkeeping standpoint to deal with three-dimensional, writing three-dimensional vectors. Again, the only issue is that you just have to take the cross product. And once you get comfortable taking the cross product of vectors, it's really trivial. Okay? Well, I hope this was of help.